If you've clicked on this video, I think you're one of three people. You're either somebody who watches my channel all the time, you're somebody who's brand new to the game, or three, you're some Uber Chad who's never touched your hideout before, but figured maybe there might be something here I can look at. Now, it doesn't matter if you're one of these three, two of these three, or somebody else completely different. This video is gonna add a ton of value in what you see in the workbench. Now, I can say this safely because the workbench is probably one of the best crafting modules in the game, if not for sure the best. It is great for making money with, you can make items for tasks, you have access to almost all of the best ammos in the game, and even craft some hard to find items that are used in crafts and other places in the hideout. So this list isn't just a list of what's gonna make you the most money, it's what has the most value and utility as well. So let's not waste any more time and get right into the list. Number 10 is gonna be the Magnet Craft, which comes from a hard drive. It starts off at 43 minutes. It takes me 27 minutes and change because my uh, hideout skills are maxed, but this is a great craft. Uh, it has a bunch of utility to it. One, it makes you a ton of money. If you buy your hard drives cheap, you know, sometimes you can get these hard drives for, let's say 10K. They're probably 12K right now. 15K is kind of expensive, but I regularly find these things for like 10, 11, 12K. And when you go to sell them, even though the magnet uh, is probably on the cheaper end right now, you're 16, 21, 25K, I list these things in stacks of four or five almost every night and sell them for 28 to 35K. So you're doubling, maybe even tripling your money depending on where you get your stuff at. On top of that, before you have the flea market, the magnet craft is actually one of the few crafts that you can increase the value to traders. So if you get out a raid with a damaged hard drive, it's only worth 4,700 therapist. If you craft it into a magnet, it's now worth 8,000. So not only do you get the benefit of crafting stuff on your workbench and getting those skills raised up, but you actually increase what you can get out of raid uh, with no extra work. Now at number nine, we have AP20. Now I know a lot of people may think this should be higher up on the list, but it's not because this one's bad, it's because there's so many other good crafts here. The reason this one's on the list is because it's locked behind Jaeger 4. If you wanna buy AP20 from the traders, you have to have Jaeger 4, and it's pretty cheap. 367 rubles around as I'm making this video. If you don't have that, you're spending anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 right now. Late wipe, early wipe, these push 2,000. Jaeger 4 can be hard for a lot of people to get. I know guys that are level 40, level 50, that have never done a Jaeger task because they hate his task so much. So they're forced in buying this stuff from the market or crafting it. Now it is on the level three workbench, so it is a little bit harder to get to, but it is worth it if you push there, especially early wipe, you can make a ton of money with this craft. And that's why it's on the list is because it doesn't matter when in the wipe you are, these can make you money. It's also one of the better ammos in the game. It's the best shotgun ammo. And if you wanna shoot anybody with a class four or lower, you have the potential to one shot them. At number eight, we have another ammo, this time AP63. It's the nine mil. It's basically the second tier ammo. There's one ammo better than this. But what makes this ammo really good is it's available at workbench level two. So early wipe, you get to workbench level two, you can craft ammo that absolutely shreds. Until people start getting into class five and six armor, the, the AP63 is just, it's just amazing ammo, especially when you can stick in a cheap MP5 or a vector if you get your hands on one. On top of that, it's pretty cheap and easy to craft. You only need to get your hands on two red gunpowders and 400 PST GZH, which you can buy those from a couple different vendors, but proper sells it cheap and it's easy to access. It's less to have to worry about in your crafting. Now, number seven is probably one of my favorite crafts in the game when they added it, specifically your VOG 25s. Uh, five fuses, five grenades gives you eight uh, VOG completed grenades. Now, the reason this is insanely powerful is because not only is it available at level one workbench, which means you can't even buy grenades from proper yet. You got to barter from them. And while their kill radius isn't as good as some of the others, their quick fuses and their access to having grenades early wipe is really valuable. After that, outside of being able to use them, they can make you a ton of money because you can get your components cheap. You can snipe them for very low prices and then list your grenades in big stacks at the end of the night for more than the average price. So, you know, for example, if you're getting your fuses for 10 or 12K, your grenades for like 14K, and you sell your VOGs for like 30K, you're gonna make more money than most of the other crafts in this hideout, even at level three, and you can have this at level one. This is available to you right out the gate as soon as you can put fuel in your generator. At number six on our list, we have Hawk Gunpowder. That's the red gunpowder. And there's actually two crafts here. The first one's available at workbench level one. That's this one right here that uses a blue, a green, and matches. And it yields you two gunpowders in about 35, 36 minutes, I think. Mine's really fast. Mine's at 22 because of my hideout skills. And the other one's up here, and this is available at your uh, level two workbench. And that uses an OFZ shell and two blue gunpowders to make three reds um, in an hour and 10 minutes on my screen, but an hour and 53 minutes uh, base time. 
primarily these crafts change back and forth to being profitable which one and which one isn't based on component prices you know there's points where all seashells are expensive there's points where they're cheap um and it all just kind of depends you got to watch on it and hot gunpowder is always in demand you use it to craft almost all of the ammos in the game and that being said with it being such a fast craft time if you save just a thousand rubles on your matches that's worth almost three thousand rubles to me at the end if i craft these non-stop for an hour so any of these crafts that are real fast like this if you really snipe components that pays big dividends for you when you get into long chains of crafting and doing lots of craft. Number five is another craft where there's two crafts for the same component, it's printed circuit boards. This is the primary one, this is the best one, most of the wipe, where you take a DVD and a, a black short-handled screwdriver, it's not the long flat, it's just a, a flat screwdriver to make circuit boards. There's another one that uses a red-handled screwdriver or just a screwdriver along with a gas analyzer to make two of these, it takes a little bit longer. Now, both of these almost always make money, but the reason I like this one is it's faster. It's the components are a little bit cheaper usually, but this is the second one that I use to power level my hideout skills. This combined with magnets meant I was cranking skills constantly and I only had to buy three components to craft these two crafts. Now, if you wanna see more detail, I do a whole video on how to power level your hideout skills. There's a lot more to it than that. These are the two I picked. They're not the fastest, they're not the most profitable, but my video explains what are so you can pick what works best for you. Now to add to this, the printed circuit boards are used in quests. They're used to craft a lot of things and it's available at level one as well so you could start crafting circuit boards early save them up and sell them for a bunch of profit later if you wanted to but through most of the wipe the circuit board craft is not just profitable it's one of the top tier profitable crafts out of the workbench now number four may be a little controversial because of how i did about it it's not one item it's a group of items and it's the top tier ammo in the game almost all of them are on the level three workbench but they give you access to things like m61 m995 spp you've got bp the pbp ammo which is the old 7m31 the high-end nine mil ammo and why this is important is it gives you access to them because many of these are capped at traders traders sell you a limited amount and if you want to buy them on the market you're gonna pay a lot more. You know, M61, for example, if you even have it unlocked from the trader, which requires you to have a wet job part six done, you're paying $19 a round for this. That's about 2,100, 2,200 rubles. As you can see here, it's way more expensive. Now you can't craft it much cheaper than this. You can craft it a little bit. You can craft it for anywhere from 2,800 to about 3,000 a round, depending on what your component's for. But the access gives you that. You can craft 100 overnight. Now you have 100 rounds you can run with the next day, or you can craft for a couple of days and then run M61 for a couple of days. So that's why these ammos end up at number four on my list. Now, number three on the list is, if you were paying attention, one I skipped over on number four, and it's 762 by 39 BP. This is indeed a top tier ammo, but I felt it got a special spot outside of spot number four. And the reason is, is not only because 762 by 39 BP is one of the top tier ammos in the game, it's also the most used. Right now, you're seeing it used by tons of people. If you're dying in PvP, you're probably more than not gonna die to 762 BP. This craft makes you single-handedly one of the largest amounts of profit in the game. Uh, it kind of bounces back and forth between this and SPP, but you're gonna make anywhere from 75 to 90,000 per craft on this. Now, the craft takes a long time, so I recommend doing it at night if you're going that route. Or if you're somebody who's just a lazy crafter and you don't like messing with components, this is a great craft because it's gonna make you a ton of money regardless of how many times you craft it. On top of that, it gives you access to BP, which isn't available from proper until you get uh, Punisher part five done. You can't buy this from him and you can get it a little bit cheaper than you can on the market now, but 985 still ain't cheap. So like these other ones that we've talked about, you get access to ammo you wouldn't normally have or potentially earlier than you would normally have in the game, depending on how fast you get through your tasks. Now at number two, we have what is probably my favorite craft in the workbench. Eagle gunpowder isn't just a craft that can make you money gives you access to green gunpowder which it can be hard to find at times especially if you're looking for it for some of the barters or crafts it's available at workbench level two so you don't even have to have a max workbench to craft it and once you get spot two or part two done you can buy both the components for traders and make a bunch of money and what this means is essentially you can buy all 10 grenades from peacekeeper because that's how many he'll sell you per cycle of these m67s you can buy them for 77 dollars from him and limit of 10 and then you buy your grenades, your smoke grenades from proper. Those two components, again, the limit doesn't even tag it. Sometimes you get them cheaper, but you get your four from proper. You can just crank out green gunpowder all day long. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to worry about what prices you're buying your components at because they're always fixed. It's why it's one of my favorite crafts. It takes the least amount of thought. It still makes you decent money. It's almost always one of the top five crafts in the workbench. And if you're not doing this, you're really just wasting time. Easily, this craft can make 30, 40,000 per craft. 
Now, before we get to number one, really quick, I wanna do some honorable mentions here. They didn't deserve to be on the list of 10, uh, but they do deserve a mention for folks that might not know about them. And that's all the quest items you can craft in here. There's a pretty big list. The big ones that I wanna mention are things like car batteries. This allows you to get car repair with therapists done without having to find these and raid and drag them out. On top of that, there's some other ones like P-plugs, and this gives you an out to be able to turn these in for tasks without having to be, you know, RNG to do them. The military circuit board is a really valuable one. It's expensive, but it gives you access to an item that can be really hard to find, and you don't get stuck behind RNG in raids and finding one of these or being lucky and getting there first. And on top of that, you have the OFZ shells, which are used in a couple of tasks, also difficult to find. Uh, you can craft those here if you need be. Then spark plugs. Again, you might think it's silly, you might laugh at it, but there are people out there that struggle to find these because I get asked about it on stream. So they're available. You can craft the AK-74N uh, that you need for one of the uh, proper tasks in the Punisher line, as well as some other simple stuff in here, you know, LCDs, wires, uh, circuit boards. These things are all used in tasks. If you get stuck and you can't find them, it's available here for you to craft. But that's it real quick for the honorable mentions. Let's get right on to number one. Now, this one might be anticlimactic for some of you, and you might think I'm nuts for putting this above, you know, BP or M995 or some of these other crafts, but number one is wires. The reason I say this is if you're ever in doubt on what to craft in the hideout, craft wires. Simply put, if you get your cables for 12K and you're selling your wires for 10K, you make over 50,000 rubles. And the faster this craft gets, the more you make per hour, right? Right now with my max hideout skills, lowered flea market fees, all of that jazz, I make 40K an hour with just crafting wires one of the highest crafting uh, profits in the hideout now. It's hard for anything else to touch it. And the key is just to buy your cables cheap. You'll see power cords constantly at 17, 18 K, but occasionally three, four times a day, they'll dip down into this 10, 12, sometimes even nine K range. And I just buy up every one of them I can find for usually 12 K or less. If it's a tough day, maybe I'll push 13 or 14. But by doing that, I have a string of things I can craft. I can then craft wires and wires can be tough. Sometimes they sell for less than 9,000, but very often you can push 11 or 12, which makes you even more money. 10K is my goal, but if you're selling them for 12,000 rubles, you're making bank. Now on top of this, wires are used in a handful of other crafts to use to create other items, which is useful there as well. You don't have to buy them, you can make them really cheap. And two, it's used in tasks. So you can craft your wires, whether it's the new daily tasks and stuff like that, which all of these apply to, you can craft for those but there's a couple of tasks that require a lot of these. And instead of fretting and trying to pull a bunch of wires out of raid, you can just craft them, turn them in and be done with it. Now that's my list. And this is gathered from four, five wipes now. I've been playing for almost two years. This is my gathering from loving the hideout, living in the hideout, spending a ton of time in the hideout, even back when it wasn't as valuable as it is now. You may disagree. Your play style may dictate some other craft that is more important. If it is, let me know it out in the comments. I'd love to hear your take and what you see as a more valuable craft and maybe something I'm overlooking, but that doesn't mean I'm perfect. It doesn't mean I'm right. This is my take. This is my list. Feel free to disagree. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.